Hi, this is Sean with Omu Energy. Today we wanted to give you an inside look into how our batteries are made and talk about some of the really cool things that we do to make sure our batteries are constantly being innovated, updated, and even ahead of the technology curve. It's very important to me and our team at Omu that we are providing the best possible batteries. We want to talk about what's inside of our batteries and how every component comes together to make the final product that gets delivered to you. This is going to be kind of a reverse teardown where we show you how one is built from the ground up. You'll see some of the improvements that we've made over the last eight years. You'll also see some of the process of how the battery cells are attached to each other, how the BMS is manufactured, and even how we use raw steel to fabricate the protective frame that keeps the battery safe. So thanks for joining us. And now we're going to stop by one of the factories to show you the first step and how we make our batteries. So here at the metal shop is where we make these metal brackets that will contain the battery assembly inside of the plastic shells. It's a two-piece assembly and it is made from steel, which is then uh, powder coated, which uh, this, is, this one is an unpainted version uh, in my hands. And we'll show you how that's made here. So this machine runs a CNC code, which is just like a mapping software system that tells a laser where to go and then when to fire and it uses that high power laser to cut through this uh, sheet of steel and then a press break, which creates the bends. And then these are our PEMCERT captive nuts are put into the, the holes for mounting things. Okay, this is the first step of populating a PCB. So right here are the boards. These are BMS boards for our larger batteries. The board is gonna get fed into this machine and puts a solder paste on top. So the board itself has all of these silver pads, which are connected through all of the, in the internal um, metal of the board. And those are where the energy will be able to flow through the board. So anyways, this gets the solder on the board in all the right spots. And then the, that board is gonna get fed through to the next machine. And this one is gonna pick up little things like resistors and capacitors. You can see it just picks up these tiny little pieces, some big pieces. It's able to just grab them, put them in just the right spots very quickly for you. And it'll, it'll actually feed into the next stage, which is just gonna use be putting down larger pieces into their spots. So this one has like the big microcontroller that's kind of running the show for the BMS. It's doing all the thinking and communicating and then after all of the parts are put in the correct place like that, the boards will get laid here and it'll pass through this giant oven basically, will melt and, and bond all of those points of contact. This is an inspection station for checking the connections. It does a quick close-up scan of every solder point. And so this makes sure they fully filled the pad every time a part is uh, produced or put, on, put onto the board. And then the operator gives it a pass or fail based on their observation of every one of those pads where they make sure the solder has filled the entire pad. All right, so a lot of times people ask or have sort of maybe misconception or maybe not just no conception of what is actually inside of these lithium battery packs because they look from the outside very much like the lead acid counterpart and some people maybe or maybe not familiar with a lead acid battery and uh, what that looks like from a cross section so what is inside of our batteries is actually going to be a sub battery pack and this is an example this is actually the h5 battery module this is four battery cells in series uh, that comprise our h5 battery this is going to become the battery as it gets built up. There's gonna be bracketry added to it, a BMS and different connections made to turn this into the final H5 battery. These are lithium iron phosphate battery cells. These are specifically are prismatic battery cells, which is a term to describe the shape, which is that they're uh, these rectangular shapes. When two batteries are put next to each other, you get tons of surface area connecting those batteries together for great thermal conductivity. The other thing that we use these particular cells for is these nice substantial tabs. They're, they're just really nice quality, uh, thick tabs at the top that allow us to have a lot of surface area for making connections between cells. And we do that actually here with a very awesome machine that is a, a laser welder. 
just does this through like a CAD model where it's a robotic and it just just creates these perfect welds on every on every tab to connect the battery cells together. In the H5 pack, it's going to be these four cells brought together and connected in series, so you get a full 12 volts. So this is one of the modules after it's gone through the laser process. Uh, these uh, these tabs are all welded on there with the laser. This one was double welded for the sake of photography. This is really cool though. The, the way that that laser welder bonds these strips of nickel plated copper to the, to the terminals is just like awesome. I mean, they're totally fused and it's like what I would call an infinite weld. So after we assemble the small uh, battery cell assembly, and then we put it together in this, this actually sort of uh, bracing apparatus, which we developed for each of our models and we love. Some of the cool design features about the assembly, one of them is our, our resistive heating element here, which is a silicone based heater uh, with a PTC temperature sensor here, which picks up the, the thermal, um, well, the temperature of the battery pack. And so during charging, the BMS can decide to heat the battery uh, if, if, if it's getting too cold for charging. Um, and so it'll do that by using the resistive heating elements to warm the pack up internally. That's part of our self-heating technology. On the top is the BMS. And here there's some soldered connections and there are some screwed connections. Uh, solder, basically it's like a solder pilot hole that is part of the PCB so that it'll accept a good amount of solder into that hole and then we can uh, pre-solder the wire and then make the connection and it's, it's got great um, reliable soldered connection there. We add thread lock compound to these before, before they get secured and then we do a locking washer as well. So they're thread lockered and uh, locking washer just to ensure that the vibration uh, resistance is there and that it creates a great connection that's gonna last forever. The, the wires actually get fabricated by a machine to make the connections at the end of these, these wires uh, onto the loop to the ring terminals. So all of that stuff is just, it's done precision and it's awesome. The, the BMS, which is what this piece here is, there's two, two different nomenclatures uh, or descriptions used with the term BMS. One is battery monitoring system, another is battery management system. Anything in, in a system that's just monitoring a battery is gonna be called a battery monitoring system, and that would be just usually just monitoring voltage, maybe current and temperature, and those things are just being watched and observed, and there's no active duty on that system to do anything. This is a BMS battery management system, and so it actually is able to do things. Uh, not only does it get that information about current, voltage, temperature, but it also, between the cells, is able to invoke balancing procedures where it will burn off energy out of a cell if that cell's a little higher than the others. Um, and it can also actively disconnect the battery internally, which is why you see the, the, connect, the big connections here, which is these are the, this is the negative feed from the battery cells, and it passes through a set of MOSFETs, and then it comes out here and goes to the negative terminal internally on the pack itself. So now with this pack, we'll actually be able to put that inside of this is an H5 shell, and that will just go right down in here perfectly, and uh, it will get epoxied into the case on the edges, each one of these four edges, and then the, the top piece would come on here and also be epoxied down to that after, of course, making the proper connections to the outside world. Uh, in some of our very early batteries, that battery assembly there has a BMS that's like double-sided tape to the top, and then uh, epoxied and padded inside. So we actually made a lot of innovation since then, of course, and you see that the, the now product versus the eight years ago product is very different. And of course, we're proud of that. I mean, it's part of what we do is, is to make it better. We're not just uh, trying to, to sell a battery, but we're trying to make a better battery for these vehicles and uh, constantly innovate and do better every time we go into production. This is one of our newest models coming out. This is the H7 and uh, H7 is just the, the, the form factor name for the size. 
And so that allows this battery to go into more vehicles. And what's awesome about this one is the vehicles it goes into are some of my favorites. GMC Hummer EV, which is my like dream EV right there. And then the uh, Denali, the GMC Denali EV, and then the Chevy Silverado EV. And they are my favorites because obviously I am a battery guy. I'm sitting here talking about batteries. I love batteries and they have the biggest batteries you can find anywhere in any car. And really there's nothing better in a battery than massive capacity. In here, we are doing charge tests on batteries. So these are all finished battery modules, but not fully assembled into casing yet. All of our batteries undergo these tests. These are charge discharge tests so that the battery gets cycled full a full time. But at the same time, the more important part for us is actually to grab a amp hour reading from those batteries to make sure they're meeting the capacity uh, that we are that is spec for. We've got a bunch of batteries that are undergoing discharge tests, which are the greens, and then some that are um, that are currently being charged, which are the reds. And then when they're done with the test, they turn to the blue there and that uh, indicates that it's finished and then it gets a pass or fail based on the metrics that are designed into that test. They can do this test all day, uh, charge, discharge, charge, discharge, and uh, they're pretty easy to work with and program. So they're kind of the, the preferred system for this type of work. Thank you so much for visiting our factories with us. We hope that gave you better insight and in how we are constantly trying to improve the quality of our batteries for you. Since we started eight years ago, we have produced tens of thousands of units. And in those eight years, we have improved each of our six generations of our batteries dramatically so that we can always offer the latest technological improvements for 12 volt batteries. And as we release newer modules, such as the upcoming H7 size batteries, they will integrate all of those different improvements that we've made over time into those designs, using the best features of each generation to make the best possible batteries for your vehicle. Thanks again for joining us, and please don't hesitate to share how you think we can improve our future batteries too. Take care, and as always, enjoy your cars. Thank you.